Come some demonstrations. Hey, Rachel, can you shut that door? Please. Thank you. All right. So the range of human hearing is between. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, look up top. Like, open it all the way. Just, just push it open. Push it open. Push it open. There you go. All right. So the range of human hearing is between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Okay. So we're, we're going to go through that range here. Here you can. You can actually see the speaker moving. Okay, what I want you to do, raise your hand and put it down when you're out. Here we go. This goes up to 24,000. Okay. No, it's still on. Yeah. I don't hear it. I'm out. I was out when you, the first few guys went down. Do you like stick your ear in it though when you hear it? Mm -hmm. I'll, turn, I'll crank it up. Oh, that's, yeah. I turned it, I turned the volume up, but there was some other frequency being played. So here it goes back down. It's just playing right now. Okay. Good at that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, question. What what determines the speed of a wave? What characteristics affect the speed of a wave? Can I your assistance, please? Thank you. Yep. Okay, so I would suggest moving in order for you to see this. What I'm going to do is several experiments. Um, and I'm going to do, I'm going to try to make the wave go faster. Not like the frequency faster, but like how fast it travels through, how fast it goes from me to Rachel. That's what I'm trying to change. Okay. So first I'm going to say, okay, let's, let's do the amplitude. Okay. So I'm going to do a big amplitude and a small amplitude. Then I'm going to do a small amplitude and a big amplitude. I'm trying to see if one of those waves tries to catch, is able to catch up to the other. Okay. So small, big. You're just an impost, so you're doing great. Small, big. Small, big. Big, small. Big, small. 
Oh, no, that was big. Small, big. Big small. They would see that they're not catching each other. Okay? So it's trying to like trying to catch your older sibling in age. It's like, oh, I, oh man. Not going to happen. Okay? So the amplitude doesn't affect it. Everybody okay with that? What about the frequency? So here, high frequency, low frequency. Is everybody okay with the fact that they're still propagate, they're still moving through the spring slinky at the same speed? Not like how quickly it goes back and forth, but how fast it goes from me to Rachel. Everybody okay with that? Same speed. So that doesn't affect it. The wavelength is, a, is related to the frequency. The first, this had a, sorry, this has a short wavelength. This has a long wavelength. Still doesn't affect it. So the only way to change the speed of a wave is to change the medium itself. So here I'm tightening the spring. Okay. Now. See how that's going faster now? Okay. So, thank you much. So, the thing that I want you to walk away from this demonstration is, thank you, the only way you change the speed of the wave is to change the medium through which it travels. Okay. Go ahead and have a seat. the speed of the wave um, changing the medium through which the wave travels Changing the medium through which the wave travels. Speed of wave is independent of amplitude, frequency, and wavelength. Okay, the speed of a wave is independent of amplitude, frequency, and wavelength. The only way you're going to change or affect the speed of the wave is by changing the medium. Look at that. Okay. Um, questions there? Switching gears a little bit. So, all rigid objects have a natural frequency. Natural frequency is the frequency at which objects most naturally, readily vibrate at. Okay? The, the natural frequency of this nail is this. this here. 
That's the natural frequency of, <clears throat> of the nail. Okay, the natural frequency of this bar magnet is this. That's the natural frequency of that magnet. Okay, it vibrated, made a noise. That's the that's the frequency at which it most naturally vibrates at. This meter stick has a natural frequency. That's the natural frequency of that. Okay. Now, the reality is there's actually more than one frequency being played. That's why it sounds nasty, like this clanky noise. Um, tuning forks are designed to have a specific natural frequency. That is why it has a pure sound. There's one single frequency at which this vibrates at. Okay? It's a natural frequency. Good with that? Okay. Now, I am now forcing the whiteboard now forcing the whiteboard to vibrate. Not at, at the whiteboard's natural frequency. It's the natural frequency of the tuning fork. I'm forcing it to vibrate. Okay? making the surface of the chalkboard vibrate, and you can now hear it better because there's more surface vibrating, okay? This is the idea behind why all stringed instruments have a body, okay? Have you ever heard of electric guitar being played that's not been plugged in? Super quiet. Okay. Versus an acoustic doesn't need to be plugged in. It's just it's just as is. That is because it has a body. I'm forcing the body of the guitar to vibrate at this frequency. When the guitar is played, that string vibration that's the natural frequency of the the string, it's causing this whole body, whole body to vibrate. Okay, that's why it's louder. If you've ever seen a backpacking guitar, it's super small, so it's more convenient to pack, but it's a lot quieter because there's less body that's vibrating, forced to vibrate. Okay, with that. That's forced vibration. Now, crazy things start happening when something is forced to vibrate at its natural frequency. Okay, so if something has a natural frequency and it's forced to vibrate at that natural frequency, what happens is resonance. That's when, that's when resonance occurs. Okay, so an example of resonance um, not really associated with sound is um, pumping a swing. So take yourself back to like early elementary school when you're trying to crack the code. Like you're looking at the fifth graders going, how do they do that? How do they get to swing? How do they get someone to swing without being pushed? Like that was a mystery. You're just sitting there going, ah. Oh. Like, okay, if I, like, uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, I can't get it. Uh, okay. The physics behind that is that a swing is just an example of a pendulum. And it has a certain frequency, certain natural frequency, certain rhythm. Okay. And the secret to pumping is you would add a little energy right at the right time, matching that natural frequency, 
giving it a little bit of energy and over time you can get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher that makes sense you're causing that swing to resonate you okay with that it's one example of resonance another example of resonance so these two tuning forks on the blocks here have the same natural frequency okay same note okay have the same natural frequency now i'm going to face them towards each other If you caught that, that's the one I hit. Okay, so what's happening is that I hit that. That's na that's vibrating. That's natural natural frequency. Sound waves are going here, hitting this, and that's like, yeah, I can dance to that. Like that's. I'm good with that. Now, if I change the natural frequency of this, okay, this doesn't cause that to resonate because it's this isn't that much energy with the sound waves. It, this is a ton of energy in comparison to like sound waves but that is like i can't dance that. that's like playing country like how do you do that like okay but if it matches the natural frequency can you still hear it okay you do that okay another example of resonance now Okay, what this guy is doing is he's making waves and the speed of the wave is going back, hitting and bouncing back. So in essence, he's pumping the water waves. Put that on your bucket list this summer. Okay? Does that make sense? You found the resonant frequency of the water waves in that particular bathtub or swimming pool. Okay? That crystal goblet had a natural frequency. And they recorded it. And then they played it back under a strobe light and you can see this the crystal goblet resonating 
put a straw in it and bounce around. You wouldn't be able to see it go back and forth. They need the strobe light enables us to see it wobble. But if you play it loud enough, is that what you're going for, Ben? Scream. Scream, I don't know about scream, but the misconception is you break glass at high when you sing too high. The reality is you just need to match the natural frequency. Number eight five for the voice instructor council. I like that guy. That was me in college. <laughs> I know, right? All right. So this has a natural frequency. If you match that. It to resonate. You get that? I'm not breaking it. This is like no. Okay. Now, a classic example of resonance. Back, I'm thinking in the 40s, they built this suspension bridge. And on a windy, one windy day, the wind actually matched the natural frequency of the suspension bridge. This is real time. So, we've learned some stuff since then. Like don't make the natural frequency of a bridge be able to be produced by a wind, like a windstorm. Okay. So, you can, like, suspension bridges, they all have a natural frequency. Like, you can find it and you can pump a suspension bridge. Like that's why they don't like want you to do that because, well, <laughs> not good for it. But go with that. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. So. That's kind of the end of the lesson. I've got some demonstrations, though, that are just for funsies. Um, so this is like a Chinese singing pot bowl thing. We just got this. I'm not very good at it yet. 
Oh, this got worse. Hold on, wait for it. This is the same idea. Have you ever made a crystal goblet sing? Like, no? You guys don't know that trick? I just washed them. Yeah. So. Hear that? Okay. Here's another demo for funsies. So, right now I've, I've got these speakers hooked up out of phase. And I put it to static. Okay. Now, as I pull this away, cert certain frequencies. Um, so, white noise is just a ton of different frequencies. As I pull it away, Give me a good solid static. As I pull it away, causing depending on the distance depends on the the frequency that it gets canceled. Okay, last demo. This is I know. Okay. This is an oscilloscope. Lexi, Caitlin, there we are. Thank you. So this is an oscilloscope. And what this measures is like, puts a visual to electricity. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like one of those, uh, EKG like bloop, bloop. Okay. I'm just speeding it up. Okay. Now, I've got this hooked up to a sine wave generator, and I've got that also hooked up to a speaker. I'm going to hook that up to a better speaker. 
Okay, so this is not very loud. try to hook this up this is like a archaic amplifier that's hot that's not good hear that this is as loud as I can get it try to do is hook this straight away to the speaker hello Hello, 
Hello. Ah! There it is. All right. So, C major chord. Here's C. Well, anyway, you got a pre-quiz that I still have not yet made. <laughs> Do tomorrow. Have a good day, folks. Hello. Oh, that's in, right? Hello, hello. Hello.